Hi, welcome back to the Yarn Equals Joy podcast. I'm Rachel and this is episode 16. Um, let's see, what else do I need to tell you? Today is um, January 19th, 2020. Um, I guess this is my first podcast of the new year and I have a couple FOs to show you, a couple whips and a major fail that is being reinvented and uh, about to be on the needles and some odds and ends of sharing the joy and other bits of joy and all of that. So I can be found as Rachley on Ravelry and Rachley Book Girl on Instagram and I have an Etsy shop that does not still have a ton of stuff in it, Joan Mag Bags. Um, hopefully this summer uh, I'll be able to restock that. I'm a teacher and so that kind of takes a lot of my time and energy during the school year. Um, so that's that. Um, some of you who follow me on Instagram know that the holiday season was um, very much made up of high highs and low lows. Um, I had wonderful time with two of my three children on either coast in the States. I have a daughter overseas who I unfortunately didn't get to meet up with, um, but I was able to share part of Hanukkah, which is the holiday we celebrate, with each of my sons on either coast, one in New York, one in California, which was something I don't think I've ever been able to do, and I was very grateful for that. But then I came home and my beloved Max, my dog of 12 year old um, rescue pup, um, had to be put to sleep and that was, you know, incredibly sad. Um, so onward and upward, yesterday my California son adopted a puppy, so I am a grand mom pup something, or he's my grand pup. And I am living vicariously through the joy that a new puppy brings, although when I talked to him this morning, he was a little grumpy because they didn't get much sleep last night. So um, I said, welcome to the world of parenting. <laughs> anyway, um, let me start uh, with my first FO, which is this gorgeous, and it really, I don't think the filming is doing it justice. First of all, you can't feel the squish factor, but two, um, you can't really see how quite, quite how big it is. It is Susan B. Anderson's Yowza Way It Shawl. And I did diverge a little bit from the pattern. I had seen um, Sophia on Knitter's League had done one in two colors, so I decided that I really did want the ruffle another color. And then I realized I really wanted it really big, so I used the Yowza, instead of weighing it, as you're supposed to do, to know that you'll have enough for the ruffle, since I knew I was doing the ruffle in another color, um, I just kept going. So it's this gorgeous, um, I think it's called um, Birchwood. It's the Miss Babs Yowza in Birchwood, which is a gorgeous, scrumptious, like gray with you know, definitely tonal with some lighter, whiter parts to it. And then this is also a Miss Babs in Kiowa, which is the Violicious, which is like violet with delicious, so Violicious. Um, and I love the way it came out because I had um, done so much more, I think, than the pattern and I had so many stitches on it. I couldn't quite gauge if I would have enough, so I stopped probably too early, and I really had this much of the Violicious Kiwa left, which I could have used, but I just did not want to run out. And honestly, I was getting really exhausted because the ruffle requires extra stitches, obviously, and I have no idea how many stitches there were because the beauty of the shawl was that you just kept going, you didn't count, but when I got those extra stitches for the ruffle, I honestly thought I was gonna go crazy because each row took forever. And then it did have the option of a Pico bind off, but I, one, did not wanna spend that kind of time with this amount of stitches, and I really didn't think it needed it, and I don't think it does. This is going off to a friend um, on 
you know, another part of the country, a colder part of the country, I live in Texas, um, I would definitely want one of these for myself. It's really yummy and scrumptious. I usually like shawls that are a little deeper um, because I like to wear them in a traditional shawl way. Um, but this actually can be worn that way. You know, she is undergoing some treatment for cancer and I wanted something that she could kind of cozily wrap around her that would feel like a hug. And I think this will. But it also, as I had it on before, works really well to just, um, you know, wear under a coat in the kind of traditional shawly way. And it really does add, you know, a nice pop of color around the face. I think this Violicious is one of the prettiest colors I've seen. I really, really love it. So that's my first FO and it feels so snugly. I'm going to leave it on. My second is the Crush hat by BK Knits. It's crush, like I have a crush on you. Um, made out of Malabrigo Rasta. I'm not sure what, which colorway it was because I made it a little bit uh, ago. It was a very fast knit because it's super bulky. Um, it's really pretty. It has this fun like purplish blackish pom pom on it. I did wear it a little bit over the holiday um, when I was in San Francisco. It has some fuzz on it. But um, I can't say I loved making it. This kind of special stitch with the really thick yarn was a little bit of a pain at times and I'm not sure I would make tons of these but I do think it came out really really beautifully and I think it has a really fun kind of young vibe and it's really cute. So that's that. So um, I think some of the other whips I'm trying to see. Um, there was another dishcloth that was a whip in the last podcast episode and that has since um, been finished and gifted. And then, um, yeah, I think, oh, so that brings me to my epic muck up. And it's pretty crazy, I have to admit. I am usually really good with directions. I'm usually a careful reader. Um, yeah, I do not know what happened. The I was attempting to make the Bonjour High, which I think is a free pattern on the Espace Tricot website. I loved the way it looked. It's a really interesting, like poncho-y, cowly thing. And I had, sorry, I had like stickies from that hat. And I had this gorgeous um, yarn from Sugar Plum Circus Paradisco, which is absolutely gorgeous. And then I was pairing it with this like Rowan Kid Silk Haze in this like light, light, creamy beige color called I don't know, what is it called? It just says 00590 maybe? I don't know, I don't see a color. Anyway, it's just really, really light. And together it was making this gorgeous muted, so you can see, and I showed this last time, the difference in brightness when you pair it with the um, the mohair. So all was good and I was just kind of you know doing it whenever there wasn't any kind of time frame on it but I noticed it just seemed like I was getting towards the end of the pattern and it was like really little and I thought well this is supposed to be really big how is this working and so I looked back at the pattern and I realized that the way the pattern is set up, it has you join in the round, and then it says knit six and a half inches, and then it goes to directions for all sizes, and that's where you do the increasing, and then you knit and increase, and then you knit. And I realized somehow I skipped that first six and a half inches, which is a pretty effing big deal. And 
pulling out low hair, pulling out anything, honestly, not my, not my cup of tea. So I decided that I could make a cowl. Now I had this kind of broader part, not very big, um, and it kind of rolled up at the bottom, but I could change to smaller needles, decrease instead of increasing, which I'd been doing, and do it in the opposite direction and make a cowl out of it. So it would have gone like this, and somewhere in here were the missing six and a half, and then it would have gone all the way down and had a ribbing that would have been broader. I'm doing it like this, so the cowl will actually be like this, and um, I'm just winging it. I'm doing a three by three um, rib right now, which I kind of love the look of. Um, I think you can see it, it looks really fun. And then I'm just gonna keep going, and at some point I'm gonna decrease again and kind of do a two by three rib, and then bind off, and I think it will either be something that I will wear next winter or even this winter, or I will save for um, one of my sisters for a birthday or Hanukkah present next year, which I think they would love. So it's really soft, the colors are great. It just isn't what I thought it was gonna be, and that's okay. I kind of like designing, I like playing with color, I like kind of doing my own thing, so that's gonna be my own thing. It's gonna be completely unique. And speaking of completely unique, that brings me to my next whip and my most exciting whip. When I was in New York with the New York Sun, I went to one of my favorite stores, um, Brooklyn General, and he and his lovely girlfriend were with me, and we, you know, I walked around, I was pulling stuff. He is insanely knit worthy. He lives in New York, it's freezing, he travels all over the country to freezing places for work. He looks like a model, I'm, I'm not being, I'm, I'm really not being biased, I mean, he really does. And he looks like a knitwear model whenever he wears the knitwear and he loves wearing it, so it has become really fun. But he is also picky. And so I thought, well, well, while we're in this knit shop surrounded by the most gorgeous yarns, why don't you show me kind of what you would like? He said he wanted a scarf. So we found this gorgeous, um, this gorgeous yarn by Blue Sky Fibers. It was soft and squishy. It was a, their worsted called Extra. It has a really nice feel because it is, let me double check, um, sorry. It is 55% baby alpaca and 45% merino. Okay, so I knew it would be drapey and I didn't really want it to be loosey loose. Um, so I was looking at stitch patterns and I really wanted something textural because he really likes that look. I had made a cowl for his girlfriend that was very textural and he loved it. So he picked out these three colors. It is, um, this is chestnut, java, and they're black. And again, this is blue sky fibers worsted. This is my pattern. I will um, possibly write it up as my first pattern. I'm not sure. If you are interested, comment below. Um, but as you can see, it, it has this amazing texture and I love the way it looks really cool on the back too. But the most exciting part of this kind of design project for me is that I feel like it's the perfect marriage of yarn and pattern. So it still has drape, it's soft, but this cable pattern gives it a lot of, um, of form so it doesn't feel too drapey I just I think it's perfect and he wanted it really long and he wanted it a little wider than this so I think it will block out to be a little wider um, if I put it around now I think well I obviously have a shawl on but you can see that it has this really oh my god I cannot describe how amazing this feels around your neck. It is soft, but it has 
some weight and scrunch and you know again I'm gonna make it you know really long um, I think it looks appropriately masculine which was what I was going for so anyway I may write that up if you're interested let me know um, another exciting part of that pattern is that um, I taught myself or you know used tutorials to teach myself to cable without a cable needle which is not hard and I'm sure if you have done it you know it's not hard and if you haven't done it trust me it isn't hard and it's really worth it it's made this project such a breeze such a great meditative knit which is my favorite kind of knit and I love it so try that if you haven't tried it okay um, and finally dream knitting so or about to be knitting um, there's this Stephen West pattern which I was not aware of and I think a lot of people might not be aware of called the squiggle wiggle what shawl I think it came out in like 2017 it is a paid for pattern um, it is Stephen West as I said I don't think um, no I haven't I don't think attempted another one of his patterns so there's some things I really like about this it is kind of that rectangular but kind of narrow shape so I could sort of wrap it around at school but it could also be like a regular scarf if you're traveling and you needed sort of that extra warmth but the thing that's really exciting to me about this pattern is that you really get to play with color and texture and it's basically these sort of you know this sort of chevroni pattern with a fade for the main colors like three um, skeins of DK he used five but you only need for the yardage you only need three and I'm only using three and then pops of color throughout where you choose and place the color where you want and I'm and I'm really excited because that is what I love to do um, so I went back and forth about using not doing a fade and using three of the same color which I think would be gorgeous and believe me there are some gorgeous projects on um, on Ravelry that people have done with the pops of color I did notice an inordinate amount of rip outs or frogged and I'm thinking maybe because it kind of got monotonous um, but I kind of know me and after a long day of school when I'm really tired I do like a certain as I said a minute ago meditative knit and I think um, I think I would be good so we'll see um, so I found a fade kit from spun right round using singles that had like six skeins in it and six or seven I'm not sure I think six and the first three were kind of bright and the last three were kind of these darker or not darker but you know led to like this grayish black and I thought wow this is like gonna be perfect because when you get to the dark one the colors would really pop and even in the first one the grays the colors I think would really pop and in the first one it introduces a lot of the bright colors that I would be wanting to use anyway so this is um, what I'm gonna do this color is these are all her singles this is hit the ground running and this is pavement I sense a theme here and this is Reaper's rags and they're pretty gorgeous and then I have some leftovers of some brights that are gonna go in here and be really fun but then I realized that I had these um, These are Lolo, Lolo did it in the little Lolo everyday sock. And those are gonna be really fun as well. So I'm excited to play with that. I think that um, he also suggests using cotton or mohair. So I may, you know, look at what I have, but I'm excited to do a project again with Stash. Um, this was a stash project and it's going off as a gift and I love it. I have a ridiculous stash, um, pretty insane. And so I 
I feel good about knitting it and also giving it as gifts. Um, and I feel really good about, and I'm excited that this will go off to a friend who's having a rough time and hopefully this will bring solace and joy. Yarn equals joy and love and hugs and all of that. Okay, so um, what else? Um, so other kinds of joy and stashing the joy, I don't have a lot. I've Along with my sort of British BBC TV theme, I've been watching on Hulu um, a show called New Tricks, which is a fun show where three retired detectives um, are brought back to solve unsolved crimes. And they have a young, a youngish or blonde governor who is in charge and they get themselves in all sorts of scrapes, but ultimately they solve things that no one else solved. And it's just very, it's an hour of really easy watching, fun TV, clever and British accents. And what can I say? That's kind of my thing. Um, okay, so my sharing the joy is, or my stashing the joy is really not yarn or knitting related specifically stuff right now. I had seen on, um, um, what was it? Oh gosh, now I can't remember. Um, Chelsea and Sue, what is the name of their company? For some reason I'm blanking, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, they were talking about the sprocket when for journaling, this little tiny, it's about the size of a iPhone um, printer. It's a portable printer that prints out two by three inch stickers. And I had been wanting something to take pictures of finished projects um, just to organize my yarn. I'm not a huge Ravelry girl. Maybe I will try that this summer and try to get up on Ravelry. I'm sorry if those of you look for my stuff on Ravelry and it's not there. I, I just am really a pen and paper person and I find myself wanting to keep things organized that way. So anyway, this is a picture of the Yowza shawl and that's one of the two by three. The colors are not perfect and I've noticed that about this printer, but I really love being able to take pictures, print them out and have a record so that when I'm flipping through things, I just have a visual reminder, which for me is really important of, of what I've done. So um, I think that's it. Um, I'm really excited to um, work on more projects this year. I hope the podcast audience grows a little bit, but if not, thank you for watching. Those of you who do, it does mean a lot to me. Your comments mean the world to me. It just is a fun little way for me to feel connected to the knitting world, which has been um, a really important world for me in the last few years, particularly. So um, go out and Find your joy, make your joy, craft your joy, buy your joy, whatever it is, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye.